Welcome to A Level and AP Physics. Today's video is the first video in this year. So, Happy New Year to all of you from my side. I wish you a successful New Year. I hope you can make more progress in this year and also you can develop yourself more in this New Year. But you need to remember, in order to make progress and to develop yourself, you need to use your energy and time in a right way. And this is the only secret so try to stick with this one use your energy and your time wisely and you will achieve what you expect to achieve in your life so i hope you will stick to this rule let's go back to physics in today's lesson we will discuss some challenging and tricky questions from dc circuits and waves from March 2019 paper 1 variant 2. I will explain you these questions in detail so you can have better understanding about waves and DC circuits. Let's study together, let's improve together. For question number 24, it is given to us a straight tube is closed at one end and has a loudspeaker position at the open end. So it simply means that this is one end open and one end closed pipe. The frequency of the loudspeaker is initially very low and is increased slowly. A series of loudness maxima are heard. The stationary wave which gives the first maxima has a node at the closed end and an antinode at the open end. The frequency of the loudspeaker is F1 when the first maximum is heard. What is the frequency of the loudspeaker when the fourth maximum is heard? So you need to understand fourth maximum and fourth harmonic in case of one and closed pipe are different. So fourth maximum is not fourth harmonic. So it's not fourth harmonic. So it is not fourth harmonic. So this one is wrong. Actually, fourth maximum in case of one enclosed pipe is seventh harmonic. So it's seventh harmonic. So this is one thing you need to understand. So it's seventh harmonic. We will discuss. I will show you that that is seventh harmonic. So this is the point you need to understand about fourth maximum. In case of one enclosed pipe, here we are talking about one enclosed pipe. One end closed pipe. One end closed pipe. One end closed pipe. So we need to find out seventh harmonic, mean frequency of seventh harmonic. Until now, we have discussed that this is one and closed pipe and the seventh harmonic is produced in the pipe. And we need to find out the frequency of seventh harmonic. And frequency of the seventh harmonic simply is equal to seven times of fundamental frequency. A seven times frequency of first harmonic. So based on this one, simply you can find out the answer. So the answer for this question has to be D because this is seventh harmonic. Now one thing more you need to understand about one enclosed pipe is only odd harmonics are produced in one enclosed pipe. Only odd harmonics. Very important point you need to understand about one enclosed pipe. Only odd harmonics are produced. So this point you need to understand. Now let's try to figure out why F7 is equal to 7 F1 with the help of waves inside pipe. If you look at stationary waves inside this one enclosed pipe, in first case you can see there is only one quarter of the wave inside pipe. So we call this one is first harmonic. So this one is first harmonic. So this is first harmonic. And this is first maximum. So this is also first maximum. So we can also write down here, this is first maximum. And if you look at the second station wave inside the pipe, means in second case, you can see there are three quarters of wave inside pipe. So we call this one is third harmonic. If we go to the next one, in this case, we have five quarter of the wave inside pipe, five quarters. So this one is fifth harmonic. And in the fourth case, we have seven quarters inside pipe. So this is seventh harmonic. But this one is second maximum. This is second maximum. So this one is second maximum. And this one is third maximum. 
and the last one this is fourth maxima fourth maxima so these things you need to understand the difference between maximum and harmonic now let's try to find out why f7 is equal to 7 f one so i will make some space first of all let me clear this part and then we will answer this question so let's make some space so we can write down in a clear way okay so we are ready now let's start working on first harmonic first of all in case of first harmonic you can simply say let's say the length of this pipe is equal to l we can say this length is equal to l so this is l, l in this case is equal to lambda by four so from here we can find out value of lambda so lambda will be equal to 4l so we are talking about first harmonic so this one is first harmonic first harmonic so if we need to find the frequency we will simply say frequency is equal to speed over lambda so in this case frequency will be equal to v over 4l because lambda is equal to 4l so this one is the first harmonic or uh, simply you can say this is fundamental frequency fundamental frequency is equal to this one now let's try to find out uh, frequency of second maximum or we can say third harmonic third harmonic or second maximum third harmonic or we can say second maximum second maximum second maximum in case of second maximum we have three quarters of wave inside pipe means we have lambda by four so here we have one lambda by four here we have second lambda by four and here we have third lambda by four so we have three lambda by four inside pipe so we can say in this case l is equal to three lambda by 4. From here we can find out lambda, this one will be equal to 4L divided by theory. So we can write down frequency of second maximum or we can say frequency of third harmonic F theory. So this one will be equal to V divided by lambda and lambda in this case is equal to 4L by theory. So I will be writing here 4L by theory. So if we rearrange this one, we can say this is theory V divided by 4L. But if you look at this now you can simply see v over 4 l this is equal to f1 so we can write down f3 this is equal to three times of f1 now we can go to the next one i will just skip fifth one i will go to the seventh harmonic now i will just skip fifth fifth you can figure out by yourself it is just based on the same method so let's go to the seventh one if you go to seventh harmonic you can see in this case we have seven lambda by four in side this pipe seven lambda by four so this is one lambda by four this is seven this is third this is four this is five this is six this is seven so we have seven lambda by four so in this case we can say l will be equal to seven l will be equal to seven lambda by four so from here we can say lambda is equal to four l by seven so we can figure out f7 it means the frequency of seventh harmonic so this is seventh harmonic frequency of seventh harmonic frequency of seventh harmonic simply will be equal to v divided by lambda and lambda in this case is equal to 4 l by 7 so if we rearrange this one we can say this is 7 v by 4 times l and this is v by 4 l this is equal to f1 so simply you can find out from here f7 is equal to 7 times of f1 so this is how how you can figure out but for the sake of answer of this question simply in exam if you see this is fourth maximum it means this is seventh harmonic so the frequency of seventh harmonic has to be equal to seven times of f1 so seven f1 so seventh harmonic so this is one thing you need to understand seventh harmonic so the answer for this question is d i hope this one is clear to you so this is how you need to approach this type of problems you need to understand the difference between maximum and harmonic and most of the time students just get confused with this maximum number of maximum and number of harmonics are different in case of one and closed pipe but in case of two ends open pipe they are the same so this difference you need to understand for question number 32 it is given to us the electric current in a wire may be calculated using the equation i is equal to a and v q we need to find out which statement is not correct 
first of all, let's try to understand what is I is equal to NQVA. NQVA. In this case, I is representing current, so simply we can say I is representing current. And N is representing number density, or simply we can say number of charge carriers per unit volume. Number density. Number of charge carriers per unit volume. Number of charge carriers per unit volume. So we can write down, this is number of charge carriers per unit volume. And Q is the charge of each charge carrier. So we can say this is charge of each charge carrier. So this is charge of each charge carrier charge of each charge carrier and v is average drift velocity not velocity of each charge carrier so this is average drift velocity average drift velocity of charge carriers and a is cross-sectional area so a is cross-sectional area so these things you need to understand to answer this problem if you look at option a it is given to us n is the number of charge carriers per unit volume of the wire it means this one is correct so that one is correct now if you go to the second one it is given to us n a is the number of charge carriers per unit length so if you look at number density number density simply you can write down and this is equal to number of charge carriers we can simply write down here so this is equal to number of charge carriers per unit volume per unit volume but volume we can replace in case of cylinder means the wire is cylindrical so we can draw this cylinder like this so the volume of this cylinder if cross-sectional area is a and the length of this cylinder is l so volume we can simply replace with a times l so from here we can write down n a this will be equal to capital n divided by l so this is also true n a is number of charge carriers per unit length of the wire so this statement is also correct Q is the charge of each charge carrier. So that is also right because Q is charge of each charge carrier. So this statement is also correct. V is the velocity of each charge carrier. No, V is average drift velocity of charge carriers. Individual velocity of each charge carrier, it can be much larger than average drift velocity. So you need to understand V is the average drift velocity. It is not velocity of each charge carrier so this statement is incorrect so our answer for this question is d because we need to find out which statement is not correct so the answer for this question is d so very important uh, equation this is transport equation you need to understand what each quantity is representing especially drift velocity v is the average drift velocity of charge carriers not velocity of individual charge carriers so that's point you need to understand so this equation we also call this is transport equation so we can write down this is transport equation for this question it is given to us three resistors are connected in parallel across a power supply as shown in the figure the power dissipated in each of the resistors of resistance 2 ohm 3 ohms and 4 ohms is p to p3 and p4 respectively we need to find out what is the ratio between p to p3 and p4 so first thing we need to understand in this case power is equal to v square divided by r now we can write down the ratio p to ratio p3 ratio p yeah, p2 p3 p4 and this one will be equal to v square divided by resistance of uh, 2 ohm resistor so this is 2 ohm and then we have v square and this is divided by 3 and then we have v square and this is divided by 4 but in this case you can see v square is common so we can cancel out v square because this one is common so simply v square we can cancel out and now we can multiply numerator by 12 so this is ratio it doesn't have any effect so if we multiply numerator by 12 so we can say this is 1 by 2 ratio we have 1 by 3 and this is 1 by 
4. So if you multiply by 12, so we will get here, this is 6, and here we will get 4, and here we will get 3. So that's all that you need to do for this question. Pretty straightforward one if you have some understanding about power. So V square we have cancelled because this is common, so we can cancel out. The ratio still is the same, and then we can multiply with 12. Numerator we can multiply by 12, and we can find the answer. So this is how you need to approach this problem. So the answer for this question is C. So C is the right answer. For question number 36, it is given to us a cell of internal resistance small r and electromotive force capital E is connected in series with a resistor of resistance capital R. The resistance capital R and EMF of the cell remain constant. The internal resistance of the cell changes over time. And we need to find out which graph best shows the variation of current in the circuit with internal resistance small r. So in in this case, we have to consider some extreme cases to answer this problem. But also you need to understand this type of questions are very common. So this is a typical type of question about internal resistance. So you need to understand this one in a proper way. So next time you can handle this question with confidence. So in this case, we will consider two extreme cases. So I will be writing here case one and case two. For case one, we will consider when R is equal to zero. So in this circuit, simply you can say current in this circuit I, this one will be equal to EMF of the power supply divided by the total resistance in the circuit. So this one is the total resistance, total resistance in the circuit. When R is equal to zero, so we will get in this case, I will be equal to E divided by capital R. And this value is non-zero. So we will have non-zero value of current. And this one is finite value, finite. Mean this is not in Finite. So one thing we need to understand means current will be finite and non-zero when R is equal to zero. Now we can consider the second case. So we will consider second case when R approaches infinity means R is equal to infinity. So this is another extreme case. So we can calculate value of current in this case now. So current will be equal to E divided by R plus infinity. Infinity. So as E over infinity, something over infinity always equal to zero. So means current will be zero. But also we need to understand as I is equal to E over capital R plus small r. And in this case, I is not directly proportional to R. So it means graph cannot be a straight line. So from here we can say not straight line. So graph cannot be a straight line because I is not directly proportional to small r. So we will say not straight line. Or uh, simply we can say non-linear relationship in this case. We can say non-linear. So better way to say non-linear relationship. Non-linear, it means this one is not possible. And this is also not possible. And if you look at this one, this is telling us infinite. So this is also not possible. So the best answer for this question is B because its initial value is non-zero and finite. So this is right. And when R approaches infinity, this is tending to zero. So the answer for this question is B. I hope this one is clear to you. And this is how you need to answer this type of problems. And that's all for today's video. We have finished over first video in this year. And a lot of videos are coming in this year. See you in next video.